Hi guys, Anne McKinnell here. Thanks for joining me. Exciting news. Today, Luminar 2018 version 1.2 was released, otherwise known as Jupiter. So this is some really exciting news because there's lots of new features here. If you haven't had a chance to try Luminar yet, uh, check below for a link to the free trial. So what's in the new version? Well, first of all, the Windows version has caught up with the Mac version. And I know there's a lot of people out there that are going to be really excited about that. Uh, previously, there were some tools that were not in the Windows version. Uh, there are things like the transform tool, uh, rotate and flip, batch processing, um, masking controls, and the preview mode. Uh, there are a handful of things that were not in the Windows version before that are now. Also, this version has a number of performance improvements, so everything is happening a lot faster than it used to, which is awesome. Uh, there are a couple of new features in the develop module, um, fixes for chromatic aberration and lens distortion that were not in the software before. And also we'll be talking about digital camera profiles. So let's take a peek inside. Before we look at the new version, I want to show you um, how the speed was and how the develop module worked in the previous version, and then we'll compare that to the new version. All right, let's take a look. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom, and I have this file here that I would like to work on in Luminar, and this is a raw file. So to open this in Luminar, I'm going to go File, Export with Preset, and I will choose under Luminar 2018, Open Source Files. And that will open the raw file in Luminar. So let's just take a look at how long this takes to open here. Okay, I think that was about 10 seconds it took to open that file. So this is the raw version now in Luminar, and I'm going to click Add Filters, and we'll take a look at the uh, raw develop filter. Now this raw develop only displays if you're looking at a raw file. If you're looking at a JPEG or a TIFF, uh, I think this just says develop. So I'm going to click there, and what I want to show you is in the lens panel. So I'm going to click lens, and you'll see that there is, first of all, distortion. So you can correct lens distortion, but you're on your own with the slider to, uh, you know, just go like, like that with the slider and kind of eyeball it as to um, whether the lens distortion is corrected or not. And I'll put that back so you can kind of see what happens there. Similarly, with chromatic aberration, uh, I don't think there is any chromatic aberration in this photo, but um, you have these sliders here. So you just move the sliders and you kind of eyeball it to see whether it has removed the, the chromatic aberration or not. So those are two things that have changed quite significantly in the new version. So I will show you that now. So I'm going to cancel out of this version, uh, cancel out of this edit, and then when we open this again, it will be in the new version of Luminar. Okay, so I've gone ahead and updated my version of Luminar to the latest version, and we'll just try all of that again now. I've just chosen a different RAW file here because I want to be able to show you that chromatic aberration, and that is something that happens when you have areas of very high contrast. So for example, in this photo I have the very dark sea stacks silhouetted against the bright sky, and on the edges of that is where you'll see this chromatic aberration problem that you can now fix in Luminar. So let's go ahead and open this in Luminar and we'll see the difference in how long it takes to open it. I'm going to go File, Export with Preset, and under Luminar 2018 I'll choose Open Source Files. And we'll see how long it takes now for this to open. Here it goes. Okay. So that was significantly faster. I think that that was at about four seconds. And in the previous version, it was about 10 seconds. 
so that's a lot faster than it used to be. So let's take a look at this raw develop filter. Now I notice that these are already open, these filters are already open um, in the sidebar here and that never, Luminar never used to open that way and I've discovered these workspaces. So I'm um, not actually sure if these were here before or not. Uh, you can go clear workspace and that just gets rid of it and you can add the filters manually like I was before or you can choose one of these other workspaces to work in. Either way, the filters are there and what we want to look at here is under the lens tab and you'll remember in the previous version we had some sliders and we had to use the lens distortion slider which is still here but we also have automatic correction so I can just check this box and that automatically corrects the lens distortion based on the lens I used, which is in the metadata of the uh, file. So you can just check the box. And also you have check boxes here for chromatic aberration and defringe. So let's take a look at that. As I mentioned before, the chromatic aberration is something that happens in areas of high contrast. So let me just zoom in a bit here and I'll move this over. So I hope that you can see it in the video, but you'll notice that on this C stack, uh, the image is just still processing here, so it's not quite clear. There we go. On the edge of the C stack, on the left side, there is a blue line. If you look very closely and on the right side, there is a red line. That is chromatic aberration. So when I check this box, what I'm hoping is that those lines disappear. So let's see how it works. I'm going to check this box. And there you go. So they're just gone. That red line and the blue line that we saw before are gone. And uh, defringe is, is the same sort of thing. I'm not really sure yet how these two check boxes work differently because defringe is sort of the same thing as chromatic aberration. So I'll have to look into that. But just using the chromatic aberration checkbox seems to have done the job here. Okay, so we'll zoom back out again. Now, the other thing that we wanted to look at, um, this is a new feature that, now this is only in the Mac version right now, it's going to be coming in the Windows version. So I guess the Windows version and the Mac version are not identical still, but the Windows has caught up to the way the Mac version was before. So what I'm looking at now is on the Adjust tab under Profile, we have Camera Profiles. So if you use Lightroom, you might be familiar with these. Uh, it's called Camera Calibration in Lightroom. And you have these various uh, camera profiles. Now this list will be different for each camera. So I have two Sony cameras and a, a Canon camera and the list is different for each of them. So it depends on the camera that you have and you also have the ability to load in custom profiles if you want to do that. But you can just go ahead here and pick one of the other profiles and you'll see that the general color and um, saturation and contrast will change based on what kind of um, camera profile you chose. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers it. Um, we have some significant speed performance improvements in this version. Uh, the Windows version has caught up with Mac, except for this one uh, camera profile area, which is now Mac only. And we have some uh, new features in the raw develop to fix problems like lens distortion and chromatic aberration. Now, one thing I want to mention is, you know, these new features that are in the raw develop module, would I actually use these in Luminar? Um, for me personally, I probably won't because I'm a Lightroom user and generally I like to do everything that I possibly can in Lightroom. And then I come into Luminar to put the final touches on an image. You know, I like to use um, 
things like the golden hour filter and image radiance and those kinds of things just to put on the final effects that I like in an image. Um, all of my raw processing I usually do in Lightroom. So I probably won't use these here, but I can see how this would be really useful for anybody who just wants to do all of their processing in one place. Or if you're not a Lightroom user and maybe you're using something else to organize your images, you could be using Bridge or um, you know some other program to organize your images. And if you're not using Lightroom, then this would be awesome to be able to come in here and do your raw developing in Luminar and then continue on and use it the same way I do as um, to put on the final touches. So um, again, if you haven't tried Luminar yet, um, you could get a free trial. I'll put a link below so that you can pick up a free trial. And there's also a coupon code. You can use the coupon code McKinnell if you want to purchase the program and you can get $10 off. Now this release is free if you already own Luminar. So if you already own Luminar 2018, this is a free update. And for everyone else, if you're ready to purchase Luminar, you can use the coupon code McKinnell and get $10 off. All right, thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.